Well, I'll just tell you the story. I'll just tell you what happened. During the war, I was working in Los Alamos, and there wasn't much fun. But after the war was over, they uh, were scraping the bottom of the barrel in order to get the guys for their occupation forces in Germany. And they made a new way to do it, that they would give the physical examination first. You see, they used to defer you for some other reason first, but this time they reversed it. So finally, it's my turn, and I sit down here. And the guy looks through the papers. You see, you've been carrying along a sheet of papers. You've written your name and certain facts. And then as you went through each booth, they made some checking marks, and they put it all down. So he looks through all these papers, and he looks up to me, and he says, Hello, Dick. He says, Where do you work? I says, Schenectady. And who do you work for, Dick? The General Electric. He says, You like your work, Dick? I says, So-so. No. So the fourth question, completely different, says, Do you think people stare at you? Well, I'm all ready to say no when he says, for instance, do you think that any of the boys sitting at the benches are looking at us now? Well, I know there's a 12 guys on the benches. they got nothing else to do but to look at these things. I divide 12, three, four, at least four each. But I'm concerned. I says, yeah, maybe two of them are looking at us. So he says, well, just turn around and look. And he didn't bother to look. See, he's not facing that way. So I turn around. And sure enough, there's two guys looking. So I point to the guy and says, yeah, I says, sure, there's this guy and there's that guy. Well, of course, when I'm turned around and I'm pointing like that, the other guy starts to look like this. Now the other fellows are looking at me. I says, not a whole bunch of them. <laughs> well, he doesn't turn around to check, you see. Well, so, yeah, somewhere along the line, he says to me, how much do you value life? I says, 64. He says, why do you say 64? I says, well, how do you measure? How do you value life? He says, no, I mean, he said, why do you say 64? Why not 73? Well, I says, if I just said 73, you'd ask me the same question. <laughs> so all this time, I'm doing my best to answer the questions, only I'm trying to be honest. I'm not trying to fool around. But then he asked me to put out my hands. And by that time, I knew I was in such hot water that some guy had said in the blood-sucking line, <laughs> he said, you know, it's a good trick to pull when the psychiatrist says you put out your hands. And he showed me something. And I thought it was so good, nobody was ever going to get a chance to do this. And as long as I was halfway out the water, I would do it, you see? So I put out my hands like this, with one palm up and the other one down, you see? And so he didn't notice. He says, turn them over. So I turn them both over. The one that's down goes up and the one that's up goes down, okay? And he didn't notice that because he's just looking to see if the hand is shaking because I could see he's looking with one hand very close he doesn't even notice that the tears are <laughs> so that would did work <laughs> have no effects <laughs> so, so I get on the bench again you know some guy sidles over to me and he says hey he says you were in there 25 minutes he says the other guys are only in there 5 minutes so I says yeah he says uh, hey he says if you want to fool a psychiatrist he says you know what you do? He says, all you have to do is pick your nails like this. He says, just pick your nails like this and you can fool the psychiatrist. Oh, he says, and why don't you pick your nails like that? He says, oh, he says, I want to get in the army. I says, you want to fool the psychiatrist? You just tell him that. <laughs> <laughs>